Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I would like to talk about the early snowstorms that have just blanketed the southeast United States with record snows that have broken the 100-year snowfall records as well as temperature records. The premise of the videos is active region count of sunspots is going to decrease over the next couple of solar cycles, which will usher in a period of cold weather, as well as the Pacific seems to be cooling down. It's almost the perfect storm that we're going into a cool phase. The Atlantic will soon follow around 2020, and once all three of these indicators turn cool, the planet's definitely going to follow into a cool phase. Let's talk about that snowstorm that occurred. About two months ago, Weatherbell put out a winter snow forecast for 2014. They've actually indicated the percentage above normal for snowfall that would occur in each area. There's a lot of winter forecasts that come out in the autumn, but most of them did peg that much below normal and below normal temperatures would reside within the eastern United States this year. The earliest snowfalls recorded in over a hundred years have just landed throughout the southeast United States and Tennessee, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, which is completely unexpected. The radar map here shows exactly where some of the precipitation was coming down in the form of snowfall. This is far above normal. The forecasts coming through are up to about a foot, which is 30 centimeters. Columbia, South Carolina just broke a 125 year snow record for the earliest snowfall in November. And these records come from the South Carolina Climatology Office themselves. The polar vortex, I hate to use that term, the dip, the oscillation, the solar forcing, let's call it that, is pushing down further into, and notice the, the green area there, that's exactly where these heaviest snowfalls are, and that's pretty much where the new records are being broken. A quick jump over into the map of South Carolina, and if you're unfamiliar with the area, it's in the coastal United States. We call it the Deep South because it is. It's near Florida, Georgia. It's warm there all the time. It's 95 degrees Fahrenheit, and humidity is out of control during the summers. It's some of the warmest places in the United States. Coming back to the climatology office, mean annual snowfall record. This actually has been over double what the mean average is a month and a half before they are supposed to have snow this year. This is a better look at it. The light gray is actually where they shouldn't even have snow, but it occurred up to about one inch, two inches. Something interesting from Jonathan Erdman coming off the Twitter feed that Lexington, South Carolina actually had snow this year before Minnesota did, which is a bit unusual. Also, the temperatures are about 20 degrees to 25 degrees Fahrenheit below what the average normal is this time of the year. A couple pictures here in Tennessee for you to look at. Also through South Carolina, North Carolina, they do get snow in the mountains, but not this early, which is all going to lead to an increase in state budgets for road salting, as well as maintenance crews to get out and clear the roads. If the guys at Weatherbell are correct, and that whole area is at least 150, 160% above baseline, then these states, Tennessee, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, are going to have to spend at least double to triple the amount this year in millions of dollars to clear the roads and keep the economies going. And for myself, I'm actually looking into the agricultural effects of these cold weather events. So can you accurately or even predict that we're going into a cool phase. The data set here is the one year from December 2013 to 14. Notice over the United States, it was a little further north. Over Eurasia, there was also some cooling as well as in the Himalayan area, along with Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan to the west of China in the Xinjiang area. The temperature anomalies, again, from the U.S. from January 2014 are starting to follow a pattern. Deep south, cooler. Also, this is not just exclusively for the winter time. Notice that in the middle of July, there was a departure showing that now it's occurring summer and winter below normal temperatures. The Pukovo Observatory and Dr. Adbutsamov 
have also predicted that we're going into a cooler phase. The Russians were actually the first ones to really come out publicly and talk about this. Is there any basis behind what they're saying? If we take a look at 2013 to 2014, snow coverage map for the month of September, first, most snowfall in 46 years for the month of October. Now this is just an incredible picture of lake effect snow coming out of Buffalo, New York. That looks like a sandstorm, but that's actually the snow front coming into the city. Wow, that is an amazing picture. I would be actually, if I was on a mountain top or a mountain pass, I would be terrified to see that coming in. The temperature reconstruction, I'm going to jump back into the Maunder minimum here to take a look at the temperatures. If we're going into a cooling phase, it's just cycles repeating themselves. Can we see data set from today that would also mimic or fit what we saw in the past? January 6, 2014, polar vortex blasts down. January 25th, the repeat. January 13, 14, winter has the same exact tongue shape coming through the United States as it did in the Maunder Minimum. Also, Eurasia was not impervious, as well as looking for cooling temperatures in northern West Africa. This diagram is of the 10 hectopascal temperature anomaly. It's pushing toward Russia. And if there were an effect, and if we are going to repeat patterns, you would also see something not just exclusively in the United States, but also within Russia and Eurasia. But this shows at least a 7 to 15 degree Fahrenheit temperature departure from normal in Russia, as well as heavier snow cover. This is the September 2nd forecast map. Far below normal temperatures. Again, we get that tongue coming down in there. The freezing line seems to be pushing toward over to Asia. Again, throughout the past, dynasties always changed when they lost food production. There's a lot of temperature reconstruction that matches perfectly with the dynasties changing when we get into sort of these minimums or colder temperatures through history when you take a look at the records back to about 3,500 years. And you see that very familiar tongue shape already starting to push down into China. This is next week. We're going to have a double vortex coming down into China. This is just a parting shot here. Lake Superior in May, summertime. Should be on the beach swimming. This is what the ice cover was last year. It didn't melt off until June. There's just so many signs around us that we're going into a cooling phase. And my next solution here. We are going to have to start incorporating food growing areas into our cityscapes, termed edible cities. You know that the cities are a little bit warmer than the countryside. There's a lot of ambient heat. We're going to have to actually harness and use that to our benefit of having a warmer climate within the cities to help supplement our food growing supplies. More modern idea of what some architects have come up with and the way we can incorporate food growing into the cities and living spaces. Thanks for watching. And I hope you found something useful in the video.